Welcome to the NC Choices webinar series, Teaching Tools for Beginning Farmers, funded by the United States Department of Agriculture's Beginning Farmer and Rancher Development Program. I'm Lee Minas with NC Choices, and I'm going, going to present the module on pasture pork production. This is one of seven modules offered in this webinar series. Welcome to the NC Choices Teaching Tool for Pasture Pork Production. This, this episode is on facilities and equipment. In designing a pasture pork operation, several things need to be con taken into consideration. Things such as location of your pasture pork on the farm, need to look at the slope of the land, what soil types are there, and what your weather patterns are. You need to decide on which production system you're implementing, whether it be a breeder breeding operation, a fair to finish, or fair to wean, or a wean to finish operation. This is going to affect your pen layouts, your lane dimensions, internal roads, and number of feeding and water employments, and the number of pigs per pen. For environmental buffer plan, I always figure a, run a buffer to prevent runoff. The size of the buffer depends on many things, such as slope, how close you are to water, water course, soils, nutrient loading, the width of that buffer, and the vegetation type and management of the vegetation. You can consult with your local soil and water conservation district office for help establishing buffer sizes in your area. Generally speaking, a buffer needs to be a strip of vegetation between 20 and 165 feet buffer between your fields and the water courses. The steeper the slope and more sensitive the soil type, the larger this buffer should be. In selecting a location, think about your asset Select your areas that have access to roads, that have access to water, but not stream access, because hogs can wreak havoc on stream banks. You need to avoid areas of natural hazards, such as stony or thin soils over top of rocks, and areas that are prone to waterlogging or flooding, as well as lands with a slope greater than seven, seven degrees. When considering facilities for your outdoor operations, they must take into several things into account. The purpose of the shelter for the animals is to provide them with favorable environmental conditions and facilitate their management. The kind of facilities will depend on your production system. It's also important to take into consideration ventilation, mobility, availability of bedding, and protection for the piglets when the sow lays down. In considering your design and construction, Facilitate the handling of materials, animals, waste, feed, and water. Be functional and design it to avoid injuries for the, both the animals and your staff. Should also take into consideration biosecurity measures and maintaining a strict biosecurity policy as well as avoiding environmental pollution. All in all, facilities for the pigs must be robust but yet portable to give flexibility to your farm. Proper insulation and ventilation can help considerably with growth efficiency, and they need to be properly sized as well as cost effective. A well thought out paddock layout helps improve efficiency, allows easy transportation of feed, water distribution, and movement of stock as well as saving time for the operations. Layout will vary according to production system, your size of your herd and your soil type, the topography and the amount of land available. Radio layouts tend to fit better on larger tracts of land and for small areas, square or rectangular paddocks work well. Here in this example, you can see an example of a six sow fair and finishing operation in North Carolina. Year round access for vehicles and machinery need to be considered. And pasture design should allow for equipment such as mowers, manure spreaders, baling equipment to enter and maneuver easily. This is an example of a radial system layout. Fences need to be able to confine pigs and discourage them from jumping over, digging under, or crawling between the wires. They also need to prevent stray animals and wild pigs from entering the paddock. Traditional non-electric fence, such as wooden post, and pig or woven wire fence or barbed wire. These can be a little more costly to install but require less maintenance in the long run. Electrical fencing systems are both portable, versatile, and cheaper 
and easier to use to follow the land contour. It is really important to establish a good grounding connection for your energizer when it, to have an effective electrical system. Electric netting can also be used, especially with small pigs. For maintenance, keep a regular check to make sure dirt, grass, and other debris do not get up on the fence and cause it to ground out or to rust prematurely. Training paddocks may be established and can be laid out with a double strand of wire set up inside a visible fence. Tying colored vinyl plastic tape, tape to the wire can help the pigs relate to the wire with the shock. Regular maintenance of fencing is required to maintain that performance. Spacing should be so that the fencing will shock the pig on the bridge of the nose or face area in order to get it to turn around. Further back will resit, result in the pig jumping forward and moving through the fence. When training a pig to electric fence, create a mini electric fence run inside of a small but solid holding pen and keep them there for a few days. Make sure to use a strong energizer to deliver a good stout shock. This way the pigs will learn not to touch the fence and they will remember it. Once again, appropriate fence height is snout height. Perimeter fences should have multiple strands and multiple lines may be required to control smaller pigs. Here are some more examples of fence, electric fence spacing. Larger animals can be effectively controlled with a single strand of elect electrical fence once trained, trained to they're trained to respect it. Gates need to be differentiated from the fence, otherwise it will be hard to convince the pigs to pass through. The use of non-electric gates is preferred. Pigs will remember where an electric fence is supposed to be and may not want to cross. Also, when establishing gates, don't locate your feeders and water as close to the gate as this can cause mud and problems in accessing the pastures. Electric wires may be offset of the fence to keep wire, hogs from pushing soil onto the wire. To avoid the accumulation of soil on the fence, place an electric wire off the main fence at least 18 inches off out from the fence and at snout level. It's recommended that when for water delivery systems that you have at least two drinking points per paddock and keep the tanks and troughs regularly cleaned and repair any leaking pipes or drinkers immediately. Poly tanks can be used to haul water periodically to put hogs on pasture. This method can be economical and works best for a small number of hogs. Automated water systems can be developed. These typically use plastic pipe to deliver water to hydrants throughout the pasture. Pipe can be above or below ground, but you will need to be well below the frost line for your area if you intend to use the water system during the winter months. Water can be delivered to, from hydrants to water points via a garden hose. And water delivery pipes need to be adequately sized and pressurized to refill water rap rapidly. Various water units are available commercially. Water overflow during drinking can often result in creation of wallows near the water tank or pipe, and therefore it's convenient to use a hard perforated platform to avoid the site becoming unmanageable due to wallows. Mobile water and tanks allow the manager to minimize the soil disturbance by moving the tanks. Ensure that wastage is minimal and repair any leaking pipes or drinkers promptly. Water troughs need to be regularly cleaned due to contamination from soil, feed, algae, and ice in the winter. If nipple waters are used, care should be taken to ensure that the drinking water is not hot during the summer months. Bury the supply line to insulate pipes and mount the nipple waters and lines out of direct sunlight. In extreme temperatures, leaving the line dripping continuously will help prevent temperature buildup. Fresh water is just as important in cold temperatures to help the animal regulate its body as it is in hot temperatures. Here are some examples of water connections. Pig feeders must be sufficiently sized so that all pigs can eat quietly and not waste food. It's very important to provide enough feeding space per animal that all animals should have simultaneous access to the feed. It is advisable to the use of partitions that will 
actually separate the feeding spaces and prevent fighting. This helps avoid the waste of feed. Cell feeders are very convenient for pasture hogs. The pigs have consistent supply of feed, but are unable to waste or spoil the feed. These should be adjusted so that a, the particular feed used will, not, will run out, but not too freely. General rule of thumb is that one third of the bottom of the feeder should be covered in feed to have the proper amount there. It is important that the feeding holes are provided with lids to limit the access of birds, rodents, and other wild animals. Old feeders from confinement barns using pieces of discarded conveyor belts for the lids can be used. Internal access roads can become channels for runout. In sloped areas, you should always establish your roads along the contour of the slope. Huts and shelters should be also be properly sized. Here are some recommendations based on animal welfare approved standards of how many square feet per head for different classes of pigs. Shelters should provide protection against cold, rain, high winds, and extreme temperatures and sunburn. This kind of shelter can be used for animals in different production groups. And then in the summertime, these are designed so that the sides can be removed and additional shade can be provided with a tarp. Here are some more examples of pasture shelters for pigs. Fairing hut, hut designs must be comfortable for the mother and safe for the piglet and easy to handle by the staff. Fairing huts should provide the piglet with thermal shelter and both for low and high temperatures and protection against crushing when the mother lays down. These should be kept clean and dry to provide a good sanitation for the piglets. You need to consider ventilation, protection when the pigs lie down, what kind of bedding is to be used, whether heat is needed in the winter, the mobility and versatility of the hut, and the space between sows within the same pasture. Fenders on the Fairwind huts allow for the sow to come and go, but the piglets to be held in the hut. And here are some more examples of Fairwind huts for pasture hogs. Weaning is a stressful stage. After weaning, piglets need special attention. Weaning facilities are generally built with a low roof and are provided with bedding. Weaning areas may incorporate training to, to electric fencing. Water supply is sited outside of the sleeping area to prevent flooding the bedded areas. Where possible, pigs should be kept in stable groups of familiar animals throughout the growing period. Pasture pigs require protection against the heat. You need to provide the animals with shade, especially during the summer. Shade cloth can be used to provide shade in open paddocks. Taking measures like painting shelters white to reflect sunlight and therefore heat is another good way to alleviate heat stress. The use of wallows has been related with health issues, but the use of water sprinklers can create a spray that can alleviate heat stress. Proper handling facilities can make a world of difference to your pasture pork operation. Working chute can facilitate the handling of pigs. If budget allows, a scale can allow to record and control the weight of animals in each of the production phases. A loading chute will facilitate the handling and prevent pigs from being injured. It should have a non-slip floor with deep grooves or studs so the animals can lean it and not slip. Then the slope should be no greater than 25 degrees. It's also helpful to have a variety of tools and equipment on hand. Pig boards can be made with plywood or other scrap material. Just make sure it's light enough to handle and sturdy enough to crowd pigs with. A hog snare or a log, large fishing net can be of great help in handling, catching and handling smaller pigs. A hog snares do require patience and practice. A snare can be used in addition to the pig board. Have a person available who knows how to use the snare and can hold the snare firmly while you do the work needed. Work quickly and do not keep the pig restrained in the snare for long. For catching small piglets at weaning or for sale, a large fishing net can be extremely useful. Heat lamps are always a safety concern, but they can be 
helpful for piglets or sick pigs. Dry straw in barns and sheds can catch fire if the lamp falls to the ground. There are newer heat lamp fixtures on the market that have better safety cages around the heat bulb. But hang the heat source securely where the animals can't knock it down. And check often to make sure it's secure and working properly. Tools like hoof trimmers can be used to trim off overgrown toes. Make sure to disinfect such tools between uses to prevent transmitting any bacteria between animals. Other useful aids to improve pig handling include paddles to tap pigs with, medical and first aid equipment should be always be readily available in any operation. Keeping those handy so that you don't have to run to the store every time the treatment is needed. Tools and equipment do not need to be expensive. Some good old farmer creativity can help outfit a swine operation. Things such as shelters made out of old grain bins that have been cut in half, or old stock trailers to use for transporting or pens or working facilities, pallets used for fencing, and repurposed tanks and drums for water tanks and feed storage, or items like metal carports for shelters. Just make sure that the items are safe and won't cause injury to either the pigs or your workers.